Hello everyone and welcome to this coffee lecture. My name is, as said, Kerstin Dresing and I teach intercultural com competence at the JLU Center for Competence Development. I was happy to be invited to hold this talk about the impact of culture on how to feel at home abroad. So let's see what I prepared for you. Some in the field of cultural studies, define culture as a backpack. You carry it with you all your life. It is filled with useful behaviors, values and attitudes. Throughout your life, you are constantly packing and unpacking what is needed for the cultural settings along the way. Since you all have chosen to listen to this lecture, I assume that you are either a student for whom studying in Gießen means living abroad, or you are maybe planning to study abroad in the near future. What can you expect from this talk? I would like to give you five tips on how to feel at home in a new environment. You could think of them like some postcard reminders that might be useful to put in your personal backpack before you head off or while you are trying to settle in. So here's my first tip. Find out who you are. Why it is important to know yourself. Because it can transform your cross-cultural experiences. As we venture into unfamiliar territory, customs and perspectives, self-reflection can become a compass that guides our intercultural communication towards success. Academics such as Milton Bennett argue that understanding our own cultural background, biases and values is vital for developing intercultural competence. By reflecting on our own identities, we become aware of the lenses through which we perceive the world. This awareness allows us to navigate moments of irritation with empathy and respect. Also, we will learn to strive for greater openness and genuine connection with others. But how does this happen? There are many ways to practice self-reflection. Let me show you one. Hiller emphasizes that culture is a dynamic process and constantly negotiated between the communication parties. In the Star of Values, she describes a value continuum. Each value has a counter value. Schulz von Thun calls this virtue and sister virtue, so both value or virtue and sister value or sister virtue are seen to be achievable. It just depends on cultural context, which is the more common way to act. Look at the blue line and see harmony and conflict on one side and the other. Now take a moment to reflect. How would you self-assess your behavior in a particular situation where people have different goals? Would you rather take the bull by the horns or play nice to achieve your goal? If you are a more confrontational type, do you expect others to behave in the same way? Can you decode a conflict style different from yours? Talk about it. Talk about the star of values, for example, with a friend and try to assess your personal value orientation. It will help you to understand your own values and foster understanding for those who hold sister values. Time for a second tip. Know your stereotypes. An example. Do you think of Frankfurt as a medieval city center or the skyline of the banking district? Well, both is right. And that's not even all to see and learn about this cosmopolitan city, of course. Why learn about stereotypes? Stereotypes are like shortcuts of the brain when trying to make sense of, what, of the vast amount of information around us. We use these generalizations to categorize complex things based on a few character characteristics. Imagine meeting someone for the first time and they are wearing a lab coat. Your brain may quickly associate them with being a scientist or a doctor. 
while stereotypes can help us to navigate our complex social environment, they can also lead to bias and unfair judgments. According to psychologists, our brains tend to form stereotypes when we encounter new or unfamiliar things. Drawing on past experience and cultural imprint, we make quick assumptions about groups of people based on only a few observable traits. As re research shows, these biases, expectations and behaviors can influence our interactions and even limit opportunities for individuals or groups. So it is important to recognize your stereotypes, with which brings me to the next tip. Tip three is challenge your stereotypes. For example, have you seen all of the German culture if you went to the Oktoberfest, drank beers and saw people in traditional Bavarian dressing? Of course not. I think you agree that they had some cultural experience, but you should not think of this as the German culture as a whole. Sociologist Alba emphasizes that exposure to different and diverse environments is crucial to overcoming stereotypes. Stepping out of your comfort zone opens our minds. It broadens our perspectives and allows us to grow. Experience the local environment, cuisine or cultural events and reflect on how you perceive them. Exchange on your perceptions with others. You will then gain a deeper understanding of the local people and learn firsthand that different doesn't necessarily mean wrong. By appreciating the local culture, we can find common ground through the universal language of food, music and more. Exposing ourselves to ambiguous situations is another powerful way to challenge stereotypes. When we find ourselves in unfamiliar territory, faced with ambiguous customs, we are forced to confront our assumptions and adjust our worldview. These experiences can be uncomfortable at times, but they push us to grow. Deerdorf emphasizes the importance of navigating ambiguity to promote intercultural understanding. Remember, always question your first impressions. So let's move on to tip number four. Build a supportive community. Why bother with socializing while you want to achieve academic goals? Being in a foreign country can be overwhelming at times. However, having people around to support you gives you a network for of individuals who understand your challenges, share your experience and can provide guidance and support when you need it most. A study conducted by Tinto examined the impact of social integration on student success. It found that students who were more socially integrated, meaning they had formed strong connections and support networks, were more likely to persist and achieve their academic goals. In other words, if you have a community that supports you, you are more likely to thrive academically and personally. What opportunities does a student life and JLU in particular provide? Take advantage of language learning opportunities. Language barri barriers can be a significant challenge when studying abroad. Getting involved in language learning can help you improve your language skills while connecting with others and forming friendships. Join student organizations and clubs. These groups provide a platform to connect with like-minded individuals who share your interests or cultural background. Taking part in activities and events organized by these groups will help you meet new people and foster meaningful relationships. Watch out for students' events and cultural program offered by International Office or here at Gießen Lokal International. This way, you will not only enrich your experience, but also lay the foundation for personal growth and success. So, 
reach out and connect. Here's my last tip for your time abroad. Stay connected with home. Deardorf argues that maintaining links with home while studying abroad helps individuals improve their ability to manage intercultural interactions e effectively. First, staying connected helps you maintain your identity. By staying connected, you will ensure that you remain grounded in your cultural imprint, even as you gain new insights and pack and unpack your backpack of values. Second, staying connected with home fosters a sense of belonging. While you might feel it challenging with a new language, different customs, uh, unfamiliar surroundings. At such times, the connection to home acts as a support system, providing a sense of comfort and familiarity. Fortunately, in the digital age, maintaining connections has never been easier. Actively seeking out cultural events or communities in your host country can be another way to stay connected. Attending cooking nights at Local International or joining international student organizations can also provide opportunities to share and celebrate your cultural heritage. Now it's up to you to decide. Which of these postcards or reminders do you want to put in your cultural backpack? While I was talking to you, you may have discovered how full your backpack is already. Or maybe you have discovered that you practice other strategies for feeling at home abroad. Great, well have fun packing and enjoy the ride. And if you would like to find out more, check out our course and consultation program at the JLU Center for Competence Development. We will be happy to help. Thank you for your attention.